from London, England. It's the Cube covering AWS Summit London 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Hello and welcome to the AWS Summit here in London's Excel Center. This is the Cube. Here's my co-host Dave Vellante, and also. Now we're joined by Prashant Chandrasekhar, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager at Rackspace. Now, Prashant, you're here to talk about really the next generation of cloud services. What are they and what are you communicating to your partners here at the conference? Absolutely, thank you Susanna and Dave for having me back on the show. Big fan of uh, theCUBE. Uh, so, you know, really I think Rackspace, uh, next generation cloud services is absolutely foundational to what we do for our customers. And so, you know, ultimately what we're trying to deliver is uh, a very utility-based model of services, very similar to how Amazon uh, thinks about the cloud and what, you know, they've effectively led over the mass, past many years. So, I think that the world, we believe the world of traditional IT services, of large monolithic contracts, where you know, you've got traditional SIs that are going and working with companies to say, let, let us transform you with digital transformation and you know, kind of outsource services, I think those days are effectively gone and they're dead. So from our perspective, customers are on this journey from one platform to another, uh, they're moving from you know, traditional IT workloads to the public cloud. Uh, there's that hybrid journey that's underway and we've talked about how Amazon has you know, really acknowledged that through its uh, work in outposts, et cetera. But the, the idea is for us to say, listen, customers are on a very bespoke journey. Everyone's on a different uh, journey, individual journey. Let's meet them exactly where they are in that journey, whether that's you know, right now moving uh, it, traditional IT workloads to the public cloud. So let's go and architect them, deploy them, and migrate them based on best practices that we've gained from thousands of these engagements. Uh, or, you know, if they're further along and they're actually the need to manage and operate these in a very you know, container-centric or Kubernetes-centric world, we can help them there too. Or if they're already you know, several years in and they see their costs uh, you know, getting hard to control because they've got sprawl within the organization, we can help them with cost optimization and governance. And all this is enabled through what we call a service blocks model at Rackspace, which really stitches together uh, various of these, these you know, piece parts, if you will, of services across the infrastructure, security, applications, across the full stack, and so that's the idea. So how would you uh, categorize, Prasant, the, the Rackspace strategy? People remember, of course, you guys catalyzed and incubated the OpenStack movement, which was yeah. kind of a Hail Mary against yeah. AWS, yeah. and then others ch chimed in, and then you realized, wow, we're going to step away. Yeah. It was a great open source project, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now you partnering yes. with Amazon. Yeah. What's the strategy? How, how would you describe that? Yeah, so you know, I think if, if you've learned anything over the past, you know, 10, 20 years, and uh, Rackspace has been around for now 21 years, uh, you know, that it is, it's an extremely dynamic market and it's driven by customers, ultimately, and their pace of change and so on. So when we started as a company, you know, 20 years ago, we started in the managed hosting business and services is the foundational element of what we do and, and support and expertise for, for customers enabled by technology. And so that really helped us, you know, take us through our first 10 years of our journey. And then the cloud movement, enabled a lot by Amazon, uh, really took off and where it was really a mainstream consideration, or an early consideration, I to say. It's more mainstream now, obviously. But back then, so we competed with the OpenStack public cloud business. Uh, and then very soon we realized our customers were all also operating uh, in Amazon. And so that really said, listen, we've always historically said, let's go where our customers want to go. And we've always been a services, technology services company at heart. So it, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to, to move away from that DNA and that ethos. So it's no different from customers saying uh, at a high level, you know, Windows or, or Linux, we can't have a very kind of you know, dogmatic view about one or the other. We just have to say, listen, what do customers want to work on based on what their you know, various, various factors that they take into consideration. So no different here. Platforms are just platforms. They're choices that customers have. And so we started with saying, you know what? If customers want help on Amazon, they're still asking us for it. Let's go and partner with Amazon to do exactly that. So that's exactly what we did in 2015 so, uh, to partner with So where with do them. you fit in that value chain? Yeah. How, how do you help customers and, and where does Rackspace add unique value? Yeah, so I think ultimately, you know, there's various uh, elements of value along the way and I sort of described the service blocks model as the way in which we really bring it together. So customers are either looking for help to get to the cloud and they're asking us, you know, what is the best way for me to get there given my current state? And so there's a deep, you know, assessment that's done uh, from a kind of, uh, we have a lot of expertise at Rackspace, over a thousand AWS certified experts uh, and certifications. So we bring those uh, experts to the customer, talk about, you know, why they're trying to go, hey, they're trying to really reduce your mean time to recovery, you're trying to increase your release cycles uh, on a kind of a, you know, per, uh, you know, uh, at, a, at a certain rate that's very aggressive operate with a DevOps principle and mindset. Uh, you know, all those things are the objectives the customers have. 
and then B, then enable them to go and say, okay, given all that, here are the workloads we would enable you to kind of like move or to kind of like build from scratch, bring our entire set of services, whether infrastructure, security, or application services, start with a value-added set of workloads, and then build from there, effectively prove the case, and then move on. Do you yeah. think the very fact that uh, Amazon Web Services growth has been so rapid, and there are yeah. so many new services coming online yes. you know, every month, yeah. that's actually helping you, because yeah. people need help to navigate. Indeed, I mean, that's a, that's a phenomenal point. I mean, that ultimately, you know, uh, part of the reason why customers in our install base were reaching out to us and saying, hey, Raxby, you've done a phenomenal job helping us in our first evolution of our journey. Can you help us now in this new world where it's actually quite complicated, you know, the 1,600 features on average, or 1,400 features are on average are being launched by Amazon on a yearly basis. And that's just, you know, despite what we hear in the headlines where cloud-first companies and us, the startups of today, are absolutely, you know, leveraging, uh, you know, Lambda out of the gate or containers out of the gate. Uh, you know, for the, but there, there's a whole host of companies that are going through this massive digital disruption uh, trying to compete with these startups that need a lot of help to reskill their workforce, to change the way they think about process within, the, within their organizations, between their business development and technology and operations teams. And then ultimately, uh, you know, how do they actually build out a much more agile way of responding to customers? So that work requires a company like Rackspace to come and help them uh, navigate through that really, really you know, large uh, you know, set of features. I suppose yeah. though it's a space that you certainly didn't foresee 10 years ago. Oh, absolutely no. That's what's so dynamic about the space, right? I think that uh, nobody, I think, would have predicted. Uh, you know, even today, we're seeing it, it, just a ton of kind of like uh, you know momentum with concepts that were very nascent, not only a few years ago. So Kubernetes as a concept, you know, almost every one of our AWS customers at Rackspace, uh, what we call fanatical AWS, uh, is absolutely looking for help on Kubernetes. And so, you know, when we think about Docker a few years ago uh, and Docker Enterprise, uh, and we think about Kubernetes, and there was that you know battle. Today, the, you know, the battle has been won. You know, mm -hmm. Kubernetes is pretty much pretty, pretty, pretty much the de facto orchestration engine. So nobody would have predicted that a couple of years ago. Yeah, tomorrow there'll be something else. else. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's fascinating, yes. and that's why customers need help navigating. Uh, you know, all those. And you guys are the experts. You yeah. carry people through the journey. Indeed. It's uh, you mentioned hybrid before. You know, yeah. customers want choice. You know, yes. even though Amazon wants everybody to put their data in their cloud. Yeah. Customers sometimes have multi clouds and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So hybrid and multi, I think, is a is becoming a lot more. I think even Amazon is you know very very sure. much acknowledging that uh, the big opportunity is in, is in hybrid cloud. Because if you think about where we are in the technology adoption curve and the trillion dollars of spend that are ultimately going to move, there's no doubt that it's a cloud first world or a destination mm -hmm. is the cloud. But uh, the, the vast majority of the workloads exist in traditional IT. And so how do we take that hybrid moment, you know, and uh, Outpost, it's a great uh, acknowledgement of that. Uh, and so they're very aggressively investing. We're, we're investing with them and helping our customers along that journey effectively. Okay. Yeah. Prashant Chandrasekha, thank you very much uh, for talking to us. My Prashant pleasure. there from Iraq Space. And my co-host, Dave Vellante, has uh, been helping us navigate uh, what's happening here at the AWS Web Summit. I'm Susanna Streeter, and thanks for watching theCUBE.